another episode of Lotus Life, the podcast. And this is a podcast spot where we get to hang out each week, having a chat about the fun in finding your path to happiness and really just how you can live your best life. Find joy in even the smallest of things and, you know, embrace being an imperfectly perfect human being. If you didn't know, the lotus plant has an incredible flower and it grows out of muddy water. And this podcast, Lotus Life, is a celebration of just that, blooming from even the murkiest of conditions in life. Each week, episodes bring conversations and share stories, definitely with a few laughs along the way, because life is way too short not to find the joy in every little moment. I'm your host, Rose Totri, and I am feeling really awesome about, you know, just sharing with you this week's episode. Not only have we got very much needed rain here today, so I've been doing like a little rain dance all afternoon, but the universe has gifted me with this really awesome, soothing, almost like ASMR type background to my audio that I'm recording right now. So anyways, if this week's episode sounds a little bit different, uh, I'm bringing you the audio of a live video that I did a while back where I talk all about just really getting back to basics of setting up your morning routine and evening routine and how they can really be beneficial for not just your mindset but ultimately your holistic health and of course Anything that helps you to feel good, which in turn is a way to, you know, jump on that super highway to happiness. So in this episode, I dive into all things about how to set up your morning routine and evening routine to supercharge your day and help you feel like you're looking out for your own happiness as a priority or as I like to call it, putting on your own oxygen mask first, right? So this is based on learnings from my own life. uh, And I cover in this episode how just really simple things or changes can really get to work for you to create a positive mindset and to really just help you go about your day with intention and create a positive flow on impact into your daily life. So It's all about taking small steps to change old old habits that maybe you picked up subconsciously along the way and just started using in your life without even realizing. So this is an episode where you can really get into the power of your thought and your thought process and your actions and just focus on your own energy to get started. Because especially if this process of having a morning or evening ritual is new or unfamiliar, then this episode is for you. Now today's episode is brought to you by my wonderful friends at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, who are the world's experts on becoming a certified health coach. I'm a graduate of their program, and this is the perfect place if you're wanting to help others, share your passion for holistic health, or just simply wanting to learn how to improve your own health. IIN have trained thousands of health coaches who are based in over 150 countries worldwide, which I bloody love, and it's creating a worldwide movement you can be part of to help your friends, family, and community live happier and healthier lives. So the program is online. It's a modern approach to learning at your own pace. There are always new things being added, new modules, topics ranging from stress to gut health to women's hormone health, just to name a few. Uh, Teachers include Deepak Chopra, Gabby Bernstein, Ariana Huffington, Pete Evans, Sarah Wilson. I just bloody love the experts they bring in. And if you're feeling curious, I'm here to let you know as a little public service announcement this week that the course fees are actually going up for the first time in six years on March the 1st, 2020. So if you are keen to know more and get on that enrollment um, before March 1st, you'll actually beat the $800 US tuition increase, which I think is incredible. And even if you don't, it's incredible value and there's discounts if you pay in full and all sorts of things like that. So you can find heaps of info, sample classes, PDFs and more on my website. Head to rosetotary.com forward slash I I N. Get on it. So in terms of why are they important to create in our lives? Um, how can they help us live a life that is more intentional day to day? And uh, really what it comes down to is the concept that our thoughts create our reality, right? Our brains are incredibly powerful things and 
um, what you essentially focus your mind on is always going to expand in your life. That's something really, um, you know, that I've come to realize a lot in my own life. And it's really just that what we focus on expands is a really nice way to think about it. So essentially what it comes down to is that you are always in every moment of your day, you are planting seeds into your subconscious mind from your conscious mind. So any little thought that goes through your conscious mind while you're going through your day is going to then by default end up in your subconscious. So the subconscious mind doesn't reason it out like we do in our conscious mind. So it simply accepts whatever you are thinking about or talking about or um, even just absorbing from outside influences. Your subconscious is just going to pick that up and it's not going to sit there and go, oh, is this worth remembering or not or is this worth focusing on? It's just going to absorb it and it's going to be planted in there. So it doesn't matter whether you are being intentional or unintentional, it still has the same effect. So if you think about it, by choosing to be intentional with what you put into your subconscious, you are then setting yourself up in a really beautiful way in terms of what your conscious mind is going to focus on and expand on. So, you know, this is the case when we create stories for ourselves, like uh, we might tell ourselves, uh, I'm so stressed or I'm so overwhelmed or I'm, you know, I'm really useless at this. And we're constantly, if we are telling that to ourselves, we're planting that in our subconscious brain all the time. And so what you can do is you can flip that around and shift it to say, you know, I am capable or I am confident or even just something that's a little more gentle and subtle that just says something to yourself every day like I am doing my best every day. You know, just focusing on those sorts of thoughts and mindset shifts, it's a really simple way to flip it around and you're planting that in your subconscious rather than the negative concepts that you might have been allowing to come in or absorbing from elsewhere. So, you know, it can be an incredibly powerful tool for ourselves just to flip that around and start planting those positive uh, subconscious seeds. So now one of the things that I want to touch on before I get talking about some specifics is about setting up your morning routine. Um, one of the things that you've got to remember is that you have to be your own greatest priority, right? So no one else is going to do it for you. Unfortunately, we might sit there and hope that they will, but no one else is going to put you as your own priority. So um, I've learned this myself the hard way in recent years, and I know probably a lot of you watching this have had exactly the same thing. Yeah, exactly, Liz, the little lies that we believe about ourselves, right? We, you know, we need to put ourselves front and centre because otherwise we can really we can do awful things to our own brains just really simply if we're not intentional about it. So, you know, what you can look at is is um, you've got to be selfish to be selfless in our life and, you know, to be able to support all these other people that we want to support. So think of it like uh, putting on your own oxygen mask before you help others. Um, if you don't, there's a good chance that everything's going to continue to go a bit pear-shaped anyway, right? If we don't put our own oxygen mask on first, how good are we going to be at supporting all the other people in our life that we want to support? So think about that when I'm go going into a bit of detail about these morning routines because sometimes it can feel like a really overwhelming thing to have to um, make changes to the way or even just to think about making changes can be really overwhelming. So think of it like what I am talking to you about is that process of putting on your own oxygen mask first. So when it comes to morning routines, right, what can rituals or routines in the morning look like, for example? So I'll give you an idea of how I've set up my own. Um, I would say that for me, they're more a ritual 
rather than um, a routine, mainly because I am intentional about what I'm doing. It's not just a routine habit that I do on autopilot when I'm trying to multitask and do lots of other things. I know lots of you will probably be going, yeah, my morning is just like autopilot. I know what I've got to do, the shit I've got to get done, and then I move on, right? Or I keep going with my day. So um, I like to think that there's a bit of a big difference there in terms of either creating a ritual that you are intentional about or um, having a routine that you just know you've got to do. So I would say that giving yourself a toolkit where some of your actions are routine can be really useful and then also having that ability, you know, um, well, say, for example, the toolkit that you could have that is routine is just knowing what you get up every day and have for breakfast that you know is going to be fueling yourself adequately for the day you know it's a good breakfast that you know you've already planned ahead or that you have every day that you know is supporting you nutritionally um, or another thing might just be that you know what your routine is for getting your kids ready for school every single day and that is just the routine that works and it is the least stressful and that's just what you need to do as a routine so what you can then do on top of that is say create your own rituals that are basically that work your best for you in your own self. So, um, for example, you know, I know women out there who, and particularly ones I've worked with who, you know, they might be a personal trainer, for example, and they've got to get up. 5.30 and be out the house for their first client at 6 a.m. at the gym. So finding that time for ritual for themselves is really challenging at that time of the morning. You know, no one really functions all that well when it's that time of the morning. So what they then have to do is build their rituals around what they know they have to do and then they might take that opportunity that after they've done their half hour or hour with their client and they know they've just been able to get there and do that, they're then carving out that time to create that ritual space for themselves. It might be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and that's when they can take the time to do those things that are really grounding and good for themselves, like, you know, journaling or um, going through gratitudes or doing meditation. You know, that's their time that they will then carve out to do it because you do have to intentionally make that time and space for it. So... You know, just starting our day with a small gesture for ourselves and putting on our own oxygen mask can have such a huge impact. It's incredible. Um, one of what I believe is a really powerful tool is to have some sort of diary or journal, and that can be really incredible for supporting that process and a really good place to start if you don't currently have rituals that you um, invest in for yourself. So. Um, there are loads of different ways that you can use a diary or a journal every day. Um, for me personally, I like to switch up the way I do it every day because it just keeps it fresh and it keeps my, you know, mindset working on different things that are um, supporting, but it's not becoming routine. You know, it's still got an intentional aspect every time I do it. So to give you a couple of good starting points, um, that just really what it does is it helps move your head into a different space and energy to start your day. Um, you know, last week we were talking a little bit about how we understand that our physical changes can affect our mindset. You know, if we choose to go for a walk or the gym or um, whatever it is physical that we enjoy, that really is positive for ourselves. So it's, it's almost doing the same but in your mind. It's setting yourself up with that positivity and that... Um, change of state for the rest of our day rather than just rolling on into say something that might be stressful or overwhelming so I also believe that you know there are lots of other tools that you can incorporate and um, I'm definitely going to be talking more about those at a later time but I do believe that starting with a diary or a journal is a really good place if you um, perhaps don't have anything set up at the moment. You know, there's other things like meditation that you can bring in, but if you're not using them, they can actually feel a bit overwhelming and it can be a bit of a less tangible 
result for ourselves. You know, um, if we're not seeing results straight away, us human beings tend to then go, oh, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. So having something that's physical that you can see, you can touch it, you can feel the benefits almost immediately, um, I think that it kind of tricks you into uh, you know, it ticks all those boxes in your brain that are like, yeah, you know, I've got this, let's keep doing it. It's it's that positive feedback that we can feel immediately. So I think that that's where it can be really um, a really good starting point if you are looking for somewhere to start from. So my first uh, suggestion would be if you've got your diary or journal, I'll show you, for example, mine that I use is this here. And it's just a handy size. It's very well worn. It comes with me in my handbag. It lives beside my bed. You know, it just goes everywhere. Um, so it's nothing big or clunky or heavy to carry around. Um, and so, you know, you can have that there. And a good starting point is, say, practicing um, what are called gratitudes every day. Um, so it's essentially that concept of writing down everything that you can think of in that space in time that you are grateful for um, and one technique is that you can literally just sit and try and fill an entire page with as much as you can think of that you are grateful for in your life and that's a really powerful tool to sort of ground yourself in if you are feeling that stressed and overwhelmed sense in your life because it just brings you back to all the things that are good and really just makes you focus in on um, and if that feels too much to start with, because that can be a bit overwhelming itself if you are already kind of in that uh, headspace. And so what I would suggest as a way that you can just uh, keep it simple for yourself is even just to write on your page uh, the numbers like one, two, three, and then what all you need to do is then fill in those three things that you are grateful for. So, um, but to approach it from a way of not just writing the thing and then it's done is to have the full, a whole sentence using the words, I am grateful for, and then filling out whatever that item is for point one, two, and three, write it out each time. And so that's a really powerful way that we can tell our brain by physically writing out that whole sentence that that is what we are grateful for. And then if you then feel like you can write more, you can carry on. But at least being able to sit and say three things that you're grateful for in that moment is a really good way of centering our brains out of that real kind of crazy headspace that we can sometimes get into. And particularly in the morning, it's a very powerful starting point. For example, if you're a busy mum, and you know that your morning is very hugely centered around uh, focused on your kids it might be that that opportunity doesn't arise uh, when you are at home still it might be that after you have dropped them off at school or daycare or wherever they're going to that you then can take that moment in the car and that is your space that you put your own oxygen mask on and you just go right this is my two minutes before I turn that key in the ignition getting my journal out of my bag and that is the moment that I am going to take those couple of minutes to really write down those gratitudes and get them down on paper and really just bring yourself back after that kind of chaos of trying to get other people organized and putting all your effort into what other people need and it's just taking that moment for yourself or you know if if you are not able to do it say in the car when you get to work and sit down at your desk you know just before you take that moment to turn on your computer you then use that space that two minutes to just take that time for yourself and do that practice so it's finding where it fits in your morning basically and what's going to work for you and you know the other thing that is important at the same time is really just to take that opportunity to put into practice some of those other things like your breathing, you know, because we all know that feeling in the morning when we are just rolling from one thing to another to another and we don't have that moment just to pause and centre ourselves. And so the breathing that we talked about last week is another really powerful um, tool that you can use at the same time as, say, writing down your gratitudes for the day in your journal. So 
Um, moving on to another technique that I would really recommend, um, and this one can really help with, um, you know, uh, building that mindset and shifting that mindset every day, is um, a journaling technique called the morning pages. And it actually, um, I first found it through... Uh, an amazing book that's called The Artist's Way and it's basically like a um, roadmap for how to um, help your mind, um, you know, particularly for people who are creative or feel like they have been stuck in a rut or, you know, feel like there is things blocking them in their life. Um, the Artist's Way is a fantastic resource that you can work through but the big thing they focus on is doing these morning pages and so the concept of what you do uh, is to basically take your journal like something like this size which is about half an A4 page I think and you want to write three whole pages every single morning and that's why it's called the morning pages mm -hmm. and so you basically you are just free writing. So it's whatever comes to your mind. So uh, it's all the stuff that's floating in the front of your mind when you first sit down to write. So it might be something as simple as you've got that to-do list that's in your brain instantly as soon as you, you know, get up in the morning and you need to write down all the things that you know you've got to do that day and that's fine. You would write all of that and then depending how many pages you've filled with your to-do list, depending how long it is, then you might roll into just whatever is floating in your brain you know it can be nonsensical it doesn't have to be full sentences it can be train of thought type things it can be whatever you saw on tv the night before that's still rolling around in your brain you know it's just a process of keeping on writing and if you come up with a blank even just writing down the words I can't think of what to write it's just pushing through and pushing through and getting it all out because you know it's a tool that after a while it just works in the way of getting things out of your brain that it's been trying to hold on to and to store you know um, I know for me personally, when my brain is really busy and trying to remember things, um, I find it really useful to just be able to write down what it is my brain is busy trying to remember, for example, and trying to hold on to. And that can often be a really powerful way for me to be able to just put it to one side. My brain feels like, oh, I can put that down. And then I'm able to move on and I'm able to feel like I'm actually progressing with other things and it's not just another layer of overwhelm sitting in the back of my brain you know our brains are always desperate to uh, re release information they're not designed to actually store information they're designed to process you know and so being able to download is a really effective way to help ourselves basically um you know you might like to think about things that are weighing on you or um uh, you know, creating that emotional sort of state in you might be a way of releasing that. Um, you know, by the end of the second page, you might just be listing out your groceries that you know you've got to buy that night. But it just is that process of downloading and freeing up your brain to be either more creative or free or, um, you know, even just to feel like that overwhelm has been lifted you know the pressure has come off so you know the aim is really just to write for three pages and if you can't get to three that's fine it's not the point isn't to completely stress you out but to at least try and push until you can and then if you feel like you've just reached a point where you can't write anymore that's it and then the next day you just start again clean slate three pages it's not like you've got to make up for yesterday it's not like you've got to um, add extras into your next day. It's just clean slate, start again, start writing three more new pages, and that's all you need to do. And so it's a really good way to tool to use if that's the kind of thing that you think might work for you in a creative capacity. Um, and just I think it really allows for a space of, you know, positivity, for creativity, um, kind of that light weightedness feeling um, and you've intentionally made that space for yourself in your mind so I think it's a really beautiful tool so 
Uh, to give you an idea for me, my routine aspects of my morning, um, having to wake my son up for school, um, he literally sleeps through any alarm clock we put in his room and I will wake up like at the other end of the house listening to his alarm and he doesn't wake up for it. So I have to get up and make sure he's up physically and you know have to go back and check that he's up it's just part of my routine it's what I have to do um uh, you know and then really for me it's also about what I have for breakfast every day is my routine I just know what to make um being you know for me I love having a smoothie and that just works really well for me and my um nutrition so that's the things that are on autopilot for me I don't have to I don't have to think about them. They just get done no matter what in the mornings. But then when it comes for my intentional routine, um, uh, I like to focus on the wellness aspects, particularly for me. It's almost like your self-care in the morning. So I like to bring in a couple of um, Ayurvedic type um, wellness routines and they're to do with like detoxing your body every day and improving your lymphatic drainage. And so I use um, Ayurveda tongue scraping is one thing that they talk about doing every morning to help remove toxins and then dry brushing, which is a way to help your lymphatic um, system work every morning and get it all going. So those are two things that I do from a wellness point of view. And then I sit down with my journal and I'll do my writing. Um, and really, it just, like I said before, it depends. Every day I will change different styles to keep it intentional, to keep it fresh. Um, and it tends to flow with just what I am feeling I need to write that day. Um, I kind of have a few uh, different mantras and things that I might add in there that are kind of ones that I write down all the time and they are just things that I keep reinforcing for myself with that, um, you know, just planting it into your subconscious. Um, and I'll then also take the time usually uh, to meditate for about five or ten minutes just straight after that. Um, I tried doing it the other way around of meditating first and I found my mind was really, really busy. Uh, so for me, doing it that round, I've been able to download stuff and then I can sit and usually, uh, usually my mind is a little bit quieter so I'm able to then really get the benefit of the meditation rather than still having stuff that's all whirring around so all up for me it takes about 30 minutes when I do all of those things um, and so that gives you an idea really of what I've put together works for me uh, being intentional with how I work on it and I'm also able to tailor it to suit me and my day for example so Ultimately, what I recommend if you are looking to set something up for yourself, which I would highly recommend doing if you aren't already, is just to look at what you can start with that is small and manageable and sustainable being the key word because we all know that if you try and suddenly add in like five new steps to your morning, it you're not going to do it because you feel like it's stressful or you're trying to do everything at once and that itself can become really overwhelming. So I'm a big proponent for trying to set up something small and just one thing that you can start doing. And so my tip would be the journaling or using a diary every day because I feel that that's something that we can you know, really easily add into our lives. Um, it's something that is more familiar, just sitting down and writing. Um, the other thing I would add um, in terms of a really good tip for your mornings is that if the first thing you're doing every single morning is waking up and jumping on your phone, then you need to stop that shit like as of tomorrow. That would be another really big piece of advice I would give for trying to establish some kind of morning ritual or routine. Um, I spent fucking years doing it, and now that I've made like a cold turkey, I just quit cold turkey. Um, I just, it's been like one of the best things I could do. Um, I might even do a whole video on itself about that topic, I think, rather than going too far down that road. But basically it it comes down to that our cortisol levels and our fight or flight response, um, if we're picking up our phone first every single morning and that is the first thing that is going into our brain, um, 
you know, we're looking at the news, what's happened, um, you know, that some, it's, it's always bad news, right? But good news doesn't sell, so the news is always going to have something bad in it. Um, you know, or you might see first up that your auntie texts you that thing that you need to remember to do for her that you forgot to do. Or, uh, you know, you, you see that you missed your friend's birthday and you're like, oh, shit, you know. Um, and, and that's just really what you're doing to your body is putting it on alert right from the moment you wake up. Whether you realize it or not in your subconscious, you're on alert. And um, uh, Basically, it's just not a good place to start from every day. Um, and you want to be putting in that positive intention and that positive, um, you know, nourishing your subconscious, right? So, yeah. Um, might just quickly touch on why the morning and why not later in the day um, or perhaps, you know, doing these things in the evening. So um, we want to set up our day with intention um, and planting those seeds first in our subconscious. So that's why I am talking about it as being a more a part of your morning because, uh, you know, if we just roll into our day and let everything hit us and slam us and just everything happens to us, you know, we're feeling stressed, we're running late, all of those things. Uh, you know, you might have forgot your lunch on the bench at home when you get to work. It's just we're not equipping ourselves to handle all that stuff that just occurs during our day. We can't help it. It's always going to happen. So, uh, you know, we, it's almost like we're allowing ourselves to be victims to our day. And that was something that I certainly felt a lot um, in, in my past. I often felt like I was just a victim to everything that happened during my day. I had no control over it or that was how I felt. And so once I started setting myself up with my own intentions, I really feel now that I, even though there are little things that might go wrong in my day or might happen, I feel like I am in a place where I can really handle that without it being a big deal or stressful. And, you know, I just feel like um, it doesn't colour my day anymore like it used to. And, um, you know, I just feel like that's a really peaceful place to be coming from every day. So anyway... Um, just to touch on next onto evening routine, shall we? Because even though um, our mornings are really important, I do also believe that our evening routines or rituals are really important too. Um, it's like bookending your day with self-care, I guess. So um, I would say that you want to have made that space for your mindset work in the morning, but you are, everyone's going to have a different evening routine, right? Um, it's going to be something that works differently for everyone. So you might uh, have, say, sports commitments or activities or groups or your kids might have those things um, in the evenings. And so it's looking really to target that point in your day when you personally get that opportunity to wind down, right? So... Focusing in on that point where you can say, yeah, I this is typically where I wind down. Not everyone else, it's when you personally do. So look at what you can start doing that might um, give you that care and attention at the end of your day when you can start to bring that in. So if you know, for example, that you always typically have a shower at night, look at the ways that that can become less of like a... Um, just what's the word like a perfunctory thing that you do and look at ways that you can uh, make it more of a self-care process or feel like you are taking that time to care for yourself so uh, you know is it that you take the extra time before you jump in the shower to put on a face mask um, or is it that while you're in the shower you take the time to use a body scrub head to toe rather than just it being a quick you know um, run-of-the-mill shower that you always do um, is it running a bath instead of having a shower? You know, we often make that quick decision like, oh, no, I can't be bothered having a bath. It takes too long. But if you actually were to take that extra 15, 20 minutes and have a bath, how bad is that, right? That's a really, um, you know, it's it's taking that time to put the extra effort into you rather than just going, oh, no, whatever, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. Um 
you know, uh, just again, putting your own oxygen mask on, you might do all those things for everyone else or for your kids, but you don't take the time to do it for yourself. You know, um, even something simple like, uh, you know, if it were, if it's the kind of thing that you really, um, connect with lighting a candle, you know, or, um, diffusing some essential oils, for example, you know, something that connects you to a positive, uh, emotional state for example so you know there's lots of little things that we often um that feels really indulgent for us but we just don't do them and you know we can actually do them every fucking day there's nobody to tell us that we can't right we're you know we're our own person so why not do those little things every single day for ourselves rather than just saving them up for some special occasion so, um, you know, I've definitely been like that in the past where I've kind of gone, oh, yeah, I'll do that on the weekend or, you know, I'll do that next month or whatever. And, you know, I just got the basic stuff done every day, but I was never actually taking that time to just go, yeah, actually, I really enjoy doing this, so why not do it every day? Um, you know, think about, like, in your evenings, are you typically spending time like watching shit that you don't actually enjoy, for example. You know, we've all kind of been there where there's something just on TV that we watch but we actually don't really like. Um, you know, what about instead that you take that time to make that space for yourself to read a book or um, what's another good example? You know, um, oh, going back to if you're having a bath, you know, listening to something or even watching something while you're in the bath, right? So that then becomes adds another layer to the fact that you feel like it's been something really um, good for you and for your own well-being. And um, another really good tip for the evenings, that is one that uh, particularly we talked about um, over the weekend was stopping the double screen scroll. Right, and you know the one you might be watching TV, but you've got your phone in your hand or your iPad in your hand, and you're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling while you've got the other thing going on in the background. I mean, I'm a shocker for doing it, and it's something I have to be really intentional to not do. Um, but I do feel like I am a much happier person when I don't do it. Um, and so, what I try and really do now is leave my phones in the room so it might be that up on the table or you know um on the kitchen bench and it's just somewhere where it's out of arm's reach because i know that i can tend to be very um easily just grab it you know without even thinking about it and all of a sudden i'm scrolling and i've got something else that i'm supposed to be watching that's on in the background and our brains are then we're overloading it with two things at once and it might not seem like it's anything big or major but you know we're we're putting ourselves through enough stress every day right so we um by doing that we're actually just adding another layer of stress whether we realize it or not now i've written up on the blog about you know sort of like bedtime nighttime routine and so if you are interested in that hop over and have a read of that on the blog i talk a bit more about the things that i've implemented in my life that i feel like really work for um night times in terms of getting better sleep um being able to unwind um uh, basically one of the things that has really helped me is calming my brain i can get a really busy brain at night and again like writing things down is a really good one for me but i've actually found that by not consuming things so whether it's like netflix or something like that right up until the moment that i go to bed has actually really helped my brain. Um, if I find that I've watched something right until the minute that I get into bed, I've got like another three hours of craziness going on upstairs that I can't get rid of. And I've really noticed the difference. So um, giving myself, myself space to wind down has been a really big thing. Um, and you might find it useful. Uh, use things like reading instead for me, because I like reading, but it's often a thing that I don't make much time for. So that's a really good self-care one for me that I feel like I've um, given myself space to chill out if I actually do take time to read. Um, using things like my Shakti mat, um, taking my magnesium, you know, it's, it's all about looking after yourself. And lastly, I just want to touch on the fact that 
um, there's been research into the, the hours of sleep you get before midnight are actually the most powerful and rejuvenating and restorative. And I think that's fucking incredible. Um, the science of sleep, man, is just really, it's quite incredible once you start looking into it. But, um, yeah, remembering that the more hours you get before midnight are actually way more powerful and um, restorative and they just do amazing things for your body compared to the hours of sleep you get after midnight. So for all you night owls who are up till midnight every single night, just think about that, that it might be, um, you know where I'm going with this, that it might be worth looking at whether you can make some changes that might be more um, powerful in the way that you can look after yourself and do yourself a really big favor in terms of that um, rejuvenating quality of sleep that you can get. So there we go. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Uh, Even though it's a slightly different uh, format to me just sitting here talking, so it probably sounded a little bit different to my other episodes lately, it still, I really feel, just covers all the points that I want to get across about how important these things are of setting up morning routines, evening routines, and just the massive fucking difference it's made in my own life. So if you loved it, I'd love to hear from you. As always, screenshot, tag me, DM me, whatever way you want to do. Smoke signal me. I don't even know. Um, I need to go and have some dinner, I think. Um, Anyway, I really hope you love this episode and get something out of it and of course as always if you have time to subscribe and rate and review this podcast i would just be so happy and honestly doing dance parties that i would totally record for you in my instagram stories and send you anyway lots of love and i'll catch you on the next episode bye